Yo, yo, YouTube, what's up with your boy, Sports and Fitness Rants? I'm back, guys. Click that like button. Subscribe to my channel. What's up, y'all? Welcome back, guys. Welcome back. Got another great video, man, for you guys today, as usual. And this video, you know, it's, it's kind of an impromptu video, but not really. I was thinking about it last night. I was thinking about it yesterday, excuse me, yesterday, and I was thinking about it this morning, and I saw some of the guys doing videos. Uh, shout out to Uncut Hoops, man. He stopped by the live stream uh, yesterday, and he asked us our thoughts on this. We done with the 90s uh, comment that we keep hearing a lot of these, uh, you know, weird fake NBA fans saying now. And I saw his video. Uh, I believe uh, Two Raw for Sports did a video. Shout out to him. Um, I don't know if Uncommon Sense did one or, or Angry Old Hoops, but shout out to all the guys who did videos, man. We're going to talk about that in this video, man. I, I have a couple of thoughts on this We Done With The 90s thing and how these people have exposed themselves yet again. And I want to thank you guys, man, everyone across the world, everyone across the states that's been supporting my channel, guys. I am truly humbled once again, guys, by all support. Shout out to everybody in the membership. Much respect to everybody out there standing up against this stuff, guys. We must continue to set the record straight. Stop the lies and the narratives, man. Stop them from what, guys? Trying to rewrite history and bend reality. And you guys know what to do, man. Turn the volume all the way up. Hit that play button. Remember, these videos are for educational purposes. And let's roll. So, yes, guys, like I said, man, you guys have probably heard this trend going on. Like I said, once again, shout out to Uncut Hoops, shout out to Too Raw for Sports, and anybody else that did a video. I saw them, I saw their videos. Now, I did not watch the entire videos, uh, but I saw, you know, some of their videos. And like I said, Uncut Hoops stopped by the live stream last night, uh, yesterday uh, afternoon, and I asked us our thoughts on this. And I said, this is my thing with the We Done With The 90s. What this, to me, is, is speaking to is the standard that the guys of this era are not living up to. So what do we always hear on, you know, channels like mine, for example? They'll call us, quote unquote, old heads. Regardless of how, how old you are, you're an old head. If you believe that previous eras to the 2010s era is better basketball or a better brand of basketball, if you have that idea in your mind, they call you an old head. If you do not believe that this current era is the greatest era of all time, you're an old head, guys. Those are the facts here. So when we hear them say, oh, we done with the 90s, what I get by that is that these guys have nothing else to say in defense of their era. So they make it seem as though, oh, we done with the 90s. Excuse me. And then what? I told you guys, they're not living up to the standard of past eras, the 90s included. Also, what do we hear going on now? Uh, Michael Jordan couldn't go left and they're trying to cherry pick uh, highlights or lowlights, so to speak, from past errors to expose or to hide the notion that these guys couldn't dribble or they didn't have the skills of today's players. Once again, if you guys want to go low light for low light, I dare you, I dare any LeBron James fan or any fan of this era of NBA, if you really want to go low light for low light, tit for tat, if you really want to do that, once again, you guys don't have a leg to stand on. This era of NBA is an embarrassment. The fact that they had to come up with, with load managing guidelines for this era exposes that notion that the past eras were somehow inferior to this brand of basketball. Load managing guidelines on grown men who are getting paid millions of dollars. They can't even show up to work. They have to force their hands. When you talk about an in-season tournament, a corny in-season tournament, they didn't need that in the 80s and the 90s or the 60s or the 70s. They didn't need these kinds of jokes. Why they need this? It's more incentives to get the players to what? To give effort. These guys don't want to give effort in the, in the season. So they try to give these guys more incentives, more money to play. So essentially, you have to pay these guys to give effort. You're not paying them for their services any longer. You're paying them just to give effort, just to stay and show up consistently. What else has gone on? We have the flopping guidelines that have been introduced into this era of NBA that we never had to worry about when I was growing up. I never heard about flopping guidelines in the 80s and the 90s. I never heard of these things. Only in this week's soft era do we have this. So once again, I expose this era is not living up to the standard of previous eras. So when they say we're done with the 90s, you guys are only done with the 90s. Why? Because Michael Jordan's era, number one, and number two, why? Because the 90s exposes everything that they try to say about this era. It gets exposed in the 90s. The players were tougher in the 90s. Those are the facts. The players were taller in the 90s. Those are the facts. They were bigger in the 90s. 
Those are the facts. They were stronger in the 90s. Those are the facts. They were mentally tougher. They had more heart, more grit. They carried themselves like true professionals. All this is obvious. It's all there. Look at the guys today. Are these guys true professionals? James Harden is a true professional? No. And when we talk about these guys, we highlight who? The greatest stars of those eras. I don't care about the bench warmers of the 2010s. I don't care about these guys when we're talking about comparisons and the standards. We're talking about the greatest players of each era. Those are the standards that we're upholding here. I'm not comparing Michael Jordan, right, to Pascal Siakam of this era. We're not comparing Michael Jordan or some of the other great players, the Charles Barkley's, the Karl Malone's, to a Draymond Green. I'm not comparing these bums. They're not on these guys' level. We're comparing the great players of each era to each other. So when I say James Harden, like, are you sitting there telling me that James Harden represents the NBA? James Harden. Guy's an embarrassment, man. He does not love the game of basketball. He only loves what he gets from the game, the fame and the money. But James Harden, to me, has exposed this era of NBA, right? So when they say we're done with the 90s, why? Because you guys are not living up to the standard. They're not. LeBron James is not living up to the standard. He's not living up to the standard. Kevin Durant, not living up to the standard. Right? I told you, Kawhi Leonard, all of these guys at some point in our time have exposed themselves in some point. Right? I talked about Kawhi Leonard's channel. The man's load match half his career. And I get it. He's had some injuries. But Kawhi Leonard has done it to himself, guys. You know he's load managed. He's gypped up fans. He has done this. Now, over the last year or two, yes, he has been better about these things. And we give him his credit. But he was exposed years ago, man. And he took his heat for load managing. He has to take that. He did these things. Right? It was Kawhi Leonard, remember, that was flying on private jets when everybody else was flying as a team. It was Kawhi Leonard who had his uncle speaking up for him, not speaking up for himself. This is diva mentality. It's a diva behavior. Right? This is a self entitlement of these players, guys. They're soft. We think about James Harden. Once again, he's exposed himself as now putting the work in the offseason, coming into training camp out of shape, demanding trades. Right? Dressing like a weirdo. No swag. No game from James Harden. He's dribbling the ball, carrying it, traveling all over the place. This game is whack. So once again, the low lights, if you want to go low light for low light, let's compare James Harden to low lights versus some of the other players' low lights. Right? Let's compare James Harden's low lights to Clyde Drexler's low lights. Right? Because to me, Clyde Drexler is a superior basketball player at that shooting guard position to a James Harden. So let's compare Clyde Drexler's low lights to James Harden's low lights. Let's go through all the times that James Harden flopped around for foul calls, all the times that he dribbled and traveled right in front of the referees and nothing was called. How many times did James Harden drive to a lane, bump into people, wrap his arm around their arm, and then flail back like he got fouled? I've never seen Clyde Drexler do that. Never. James Harden don't go for rebounds. Not like Clyde Drexler. He's not an athlete like Clyde Drexler. James Harden can barely jump like a Clyde Drexler. He's not the athlete of a Clyde Drexler. But they keep telling us this era is bigger, stronger, faster. James Harden is bigger, stronger, faster? No, he's not. Right? Give me Clyde Drexler all day, every day. The effort on the defensive end. Where's the effort from defense from a Clyde Drexler? I mean, from James Harden. Clyde Drexler gave much more effort than James Harden ever did. Could you guys imagine, Michael, let's take James Harden out uh, uh, of, the, of this era and let's hit swap him and Clyde Drexler. And let's put James Harden on the 1992 Portland Trailblazers. Let's put James Harden against Michael Jordan in the NBA Finals in 92. What do you guys think would have happened? It would have been an embarrassment, guys, a complete embarrassment. James Harden wouldn't know what to do with Michael Jordan. He would have let them stand and still. Stand and still. It's ridiculous for people to even think that someone like a James Harden, who won an MVP in his era, would ever be great in the 90s. Once again, let's go low light for low light. Let's go see how many times James Harden flopped around, laid on the floor. Let's go see how many times James Harden came into camp out of shape. Let's go see this. Once again, exposed. LeBron James, right? We done with the 90s. We're done with LeBron James in his era. This thing about LeBron James. LeBron James, guys, I told you, would not be the best player in the 90s. He would not be close to the best player in the 90s. He would be a great player still, but he would not be winning all these MVPs, and he damn sure would not be winning any championships. Because why? He would try to team up with players, but they didn't do that back in the day. So nobody would want to team up with LeBron James. 
So he would be stuck on his own franchise trying to go past guys like Michael Jordan and Patrick Ewing and Clyde, uh, Clyde Drexler and Hakeem Olajuwon and David Robinson and Charles Barkley, Shaquille O'Neal. All these guys would be standing in his way. Reggie Miller's. LeBron James and his era has been exposed. I told you, they're not living up to the standard, guys, of previous eras when they talk about the skills of this era. Once again, let's compare lowlights. You want to get and cherry pick some video from the 90s or the 80s? We could do plenty of that in the 2010s, man, in the 2020s. Plenty of video. Plenty of video. Let's not go to the bubble season and start pulling a video from the bubble season and how nonsensical that was. Right, should we do that? We won't do that. Let's pull all the video up of the players having fans ejected from the games. Those are low lights. Let's pull up all the video of LeBron James airballing free throws. Airballing free throws all the time. I want the LeBron James fans to go from 2019, just from 2019, when he went to the Lakers, from that year to now, those six, seven years, whatever it is, go count how many air balls LeBron James shot from the free throw line. I guarantee you guys, it's the most in, in a stretch in NBA history, guys, for a perimeter player. It's insane how many air balls this man has shot in his career. It's insane, guys. So once again, the low lights, let's compare low lights, exposed. This era, when we talk about the officiating of this era, we talk about the guy's skills. They talk about these guys' dribbling ability. These guys are carrying the ball over the court. They're tra literally traveling all over the court, guys. Nothing's called. In the 90s, the officials actually called palming violation, the carries, the traveling. They called these things. They enforced the rules, right, to a degree. Not like now. It's a joke. It's a complete joke, guys. There's no defense in the game anymore. This is why we're done with this era. They're not living up to the standard. This is why no one has anything to say. When you make a video, they can't dispute your videos. So what are they doing now? We're done with the 90s. That's fine. You guys can be done with the 90s. Unfortunately for you guys, you fake fans of this era of NBA, unfortunately for you guys, this brand of basketball is not living up to the past eras. The standards not being upheld. This is why the game is not as popular. It's not as popular because no one wants to watch this boring stuff. So, I got, like I told you guys, if they want to go low light for low light, 80s, 90s, 70s, whatever they got video footage of. If you want to go low light for low light, you guys won't stand a chance. Once again, I'll put all of LeBron James low lights versus Michael Jordan's low lights, and let's see who comes out on top, guys. Let's see who comes out on top. I'm pretty sure Michael Jordan's low lights are a lot more, a lot superior to LeBron James. Right? We think about all the embarrassing performances from LeBron James. Hell, all we got to do is point out the 2011 NBA Finals and all the low lights from that Finals. You want to talk about Michael Jordan can't go to his left hand. Michael Jordan is the most creative finisher in NBA history, guys, whether we're talking above the rim or below the rim. He's more creative than Kyrie Irving. I don't care what anybody says. Michael Jordan has the creativity, guys. All right? Kyrie Irving's sensational. He can, he can use the backboard and use the English. I get all that. But he's not creative like Michael Jordan, guys. Not in the air, not floating and contorting his body and switching hands. And for people to say that Michael Jordan has no left hand, like I said, this is what we're dealing with now. This is how deteriorated the basketball conversations have gotten, where they allow anyone to just speak now. I told you, these idiots, everyone's got a, a podcast now. Everyone has something to say. But when you hear them speak, it's never accurate, and they don't know what they're talking about, man. They expose themselves. All these guys have exposed themselves. So once again, I say, what are we talking about here, the lowlights? We can go through low lights. Michael Jordan can fish with his left hand, can fish with his right hand. He could drive left. He could drive right. He could pass with either hand. I mean, what are we talking about here? Michael Jordan is the only player in NBA's history, guys, that literally had zero weaknesses on the basketball court. His mind was not a weakness. His physical abilities was not a weakness. His leadership, all the intangibles, there were no weaknesses there. And when you talk about his overall game, he developed his game and worked on his weaknesses so that they became strengths. I told you, I was watching a game, I believe it was the 1992 first round playoffs, the Chicago Bulls versus the Miami Heat. 1992 first round, guys. And I, I believe it was Dick Versace uh, broadcasting the game. And I can't remember if it was Dick Enberg or it was somebody else. Right, that they were there announcing, broadcasting the game. And what he said during the broadcast, I thought was very interesting. He said, 
What you want to do with Michael Jordan is force him to shoot it because that's his, uh, the weakest part of his game is what he says. Something like that, to that effect. And then he immediately corrected himself to, to make the people at home understand. When I'm saying that, he said, when I say Michael Jordan's weak spot, he goes, I mean his least strong point. That's what he's meant. His least strong point. That's what he said he corrected himself. Because he didn't want people to think that Michael Jordan had a weakness. Because we all knew that Michael Jordan had no weaknesses. And that's what he corrected himself and said. When I say a weak part, he goes, I mean his least strong point of his game. Because those are the facts. Any perceived weakness that Michael Jordan had coming into the league, the left hand, the lack of jump shot touch on the jump shot, those kinds of things, right? His overall play, he worked on all of these things. Right, he got stronger, went and lifted weights. Right, he worked on his game. Michael Jordan wanted to win, so he did everything in his power to be better. Remember, he always said, if I felt I wasn't improving, then I knew it was time for me to step away from the game. It was always about improving and getting better. That's how the Bulls were able to become champions. Because Michael Jordan never rested on his laurels. Never said, oh, I'm good enough now. No, he kept pushing and pushing his teammates, pushing himself. So, once again, to me, Michael Jordan is the most skilled player in the NBA in NBA's history because Michael Jordan never rested on his laurels. He worked on all of his weaknesses, turned them into strength. He did everything at a high level. Everything. And had all the intangibles that a lot of guys don't have. He had the heart, the grit a lot of guys don't have. He had the athleticism that some guys do not have. So, once again, you guys know the deal, man. When you hear them say we done with the 90s, and they try to talk about Michael Jordan's left hand or some of the players. Once again, I tell you guys, if they want to go low light for low light of 2010's era NBA, or just let's go with LeBron James low lights. I mean, my goodness, guys, you can go through minutes, minutes long videos of LeBron James just flopping in his career. You'll never find that from Michael Jordan, guys. Never. We can go minutes long video of LeBron James airballing free throws. We can go through minutes long video of LeBron James missing layups. At six foot nine, 260, with nobody around him, missing wide open layups, LeBron James. We can go through all this video, guys. We can go through miss long video of LeBron James standing on the court, blowing on his hands, biting his nails. Oh, can Michael, can, can LeBron James bite his left hand nails? Does LeBron James have a, a left handed bite, nail bite? Does LeBron James have a left hand when he's blowing on his hands? We have missed long video of this stuff. We have missed long video of LeBron James and others of this era standing on defense, not getting back on defense, right? How many times have you seen LeBron James standing on one end of the court while his team is playing five on four on the other end? Miss long video of this stuff. I don't see Michael Jordan doing these things. LeBron James all the time, guys, never hustling back. LeBron James is a type of player to turn the ball over, right? He'll throw a bad pass. And immediately blame his teammate. The ball will go the other way. And LeBron James will still be standing there upset that his teammate did not catch the ball. Everything is always their fault. Think about LeBron James' body language, guys, on the court. These are the lowlights of LeBron James. His body language is poor. LeBron James, once again, the team makes a mistake or something. There goes LeBron James. With a look at the scars on his face. Palms up in the air, right? Looking confused. Looking to blame somebody else. LeBron James is always blaming guys. He blames his teammates in the middle of plays. In the middle of games, he's blaming guys. Right? Remember Kyle Kuzma to push him in the back for a defensive rotation? Let's put that on video. Please, the LeBron James fan club that you're done with the 90s, bring me a video of Michael Jordan being shoved in the back by B.J. Armstrong or Scottie Pippen or Horace Grant or one of these other guys to play defense. I've never seen this. But we've seen the video of LeBron James because he's standing around defense all the time. Just standing around. We could show Miss Long video of LeBron James not even jumping for a rebound. Not even jumping. He'll have 10, 11 rebounds in a game. Zero offensive rebounds. No effort given for any of these rebounds. He's standing there. Miss Long videos of this stuff, guys. We have Miss Long video of LeBron James walking off the court with minutes to go in games. Minutes to go in games. Just the other night, he walked over three and a half minutes to go in the game. I've never seen Michael Jordan do this. I've never seen any of the players of that era do this. LeBron James does many times. And so does other players. So once again, if you want to go low light for low light, LeBron James doesn't stand a chance. You guys have a leg to stand on. That's why I find it hilarious. The people out there right now, the fake fans of this era of NBA who like to talk down on past eras, they're mad because this era does not live up to the standards of the previous eras. 
Nobody talks about this era, right, with such reverence or love as you heard people talk about the 2000s era or the 90s or the 80s or the 60s or the 70s. No one talks about the 2010s like this. It's a laughing stock of an era where you have guys like James Harden winning MVPs, Russell Westbrook winning MVPs, Kevin Durant joining a super team to win his two championships. You have LeBron James, who's supposed to be the greatest player of his era, asking us for respect. But some weirdos on TikTok want to try to tell us that Michael Jordan got a left hand, that we done with the 90s. Once again, none of these fools on TikTok, TikTok know a damn thing about basketball, guys. They don't know nothing. They have no videos worth a damn. They can't speak intellectually about basketball. They know nothing. Nothing. None of these guys, even ex-NBA players, Gilbert Arenas, J.J. Redick, they can't speak intelligently about the 90s or the 80s. They sound stupid because, once again, they're being disingenuous and they don't know the history of the NBA. And they're just out there for clicks and money. So shout out to Uncut Hoops. Uh, shout out to True World for Sports. I know they did videos on this. If anybody else did a video, shout out to my man Uncommon Sense, Angry Old Hoops. You want to see video footage of the low lights? Go to Angry Old Hoops channel. He gives you all the videotape of what I'm telling you right now. Shout out to my man Michael Jordan fans are the best. Shout out to all you guys out there, man, for real. Shout out to my man Retro Heat Check. Shout out to Jordan vs. LeBron. Everyone that's standing up to the lies and the narratives. Shout out to Man Down Sports. You guys know the deal, man. The 90s, man, is on another level compared to the 2010s, guys. Remember that. These guys are a joke. That's why they have all these rules put in to try to help the game. You guys know the deal, man. I'll catch you guys on the next one.